Welcome back. Yes, Lord, I enjoyed every minute that I was gone. Every minute, I tell you. And you know how uh, vacations are. When uh, just about when they're over is when you really start feeling like you're relaxing. And then it's time to go back to your daily grind. And so um, I thank God for uh, Pastor Bland and him listening to the Lord. I believe that was really the Lord. (laughs) I do. And so I thank God for him uh, just obeying the spirit and uh, giving us a, a little bit of a respite. Uh, allowing us time to uh, collect, rejuvenate, and come back uh, to get right back at it. God is so good. Open up your Bibles to Romans, the fifth chapter. And so we're just going to keep on going, just like we never had a break. And so God is good like that. And the good thing about it is that you had a break from coming to the actual church, but you never had a break in communing with God. And so we thank God for, that's one of the things we're going to talk about today, when we're justified with God, that we don't have to come into this building uh, just to say that we had fellowship with him. And so we thank God for that. And so we know that as we're going through this trek in Romans, and we've done this before, and I tell you, this, this, it has always, it always brings new revelations to me, and uh, it always gives me a better understanding of my relationship with uh, God, my relationship with God through Christ Jesus, and how that came to be. And so... Um, even this chapter that we're going through today in Romans, the fifth chapter, I think is one of the most beautiful chapters in the Bible. Uh, just the way that Paul has laid it out. I don't know why he would ever say that he wasn't an eloquent speaker because my goodness, when he just puts the words together, it's just like you can just see, you can just see what he's talking about. And so as in Romans then, we've already talked about how when he opened up this uh, letter, how he talked about how the Gentile world is guilty. Then he went on to talk about how the Jewish world is guilty. But he, he went on to say in the third chapter that one can't talk about the other because the whole world is guilty. Then he began to explain uh, justification, uh, what it is and how it works. And then he illustrated Uh, justification by using Father Abraham, something that uh, his Jewish audience was very familiar with, and talked about how then we all the children of Abraham because of the faith of Abraham. And now then he begins to talk about the results of justification and the blessings and basis of our justification. So In Romans, the fifth chapter, what we find out then is our justification is just not simply a guarantee of heaven. But, you know, that's a good thing. It's a good thing that it is. But it it is also the source of a whole lot of blessings. And Paul lays that out step by step. And he wants to assure uh, his readers that Justification is a lasting thing. Aren't you glad about that? Because, see, what we were taught as we were coming up is that you could step in and step out. And uh, if, if you can step in and step out, everybody, everybody is, is lost. Everybody is just lost. And so when uh, I began to understand that, oh, my goodness, then, well, what did Christ die for? What did Christ die for? And so um, our justification is a lasting thing. When God declared us righteous in Jesus Christ, he gave to us spiritual blessings that assure that we cannot be lost. Aren't you glad for blessed assurance this morning? I'm so glad. I'm so glad. And I'm so glad that, you know, because, y'all, this this is a lot of foolery going on. It's a lot of foolery going on. Uh, uh, you know, it's a lot of uh, different philosophies and a lot, lot of uh, ideologies, a lot of theologies going on. So, you know, when you have an understanding of what you believe in. And so in Romans, the fifth chapter, he says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have what? 
we have peace with God. Now, I know everybody in here ought to be shouting because I know uh, uh, Robert is not the only one that wants peace. I want peace. I want peace. But to have peace with God? To have peace with God, that takes your relationship with God to a whole nother level. Imagine how, uh, if just in a natural sense, if you've been at war, if you've been at enmity, that's what the Bible calls that, enmity. If you've been at enmity with someone, you've been a struggle with someone. And in a natural sense, you know, every time you see this person, every time you see him, it's one thing and another. It's always a struggle. It's always an argument. It's always confusion. But then finally, when you get away from that person, you get some peace. Just imagine. And so then we know then that we were at enmity with God. The unsaved person, when you're not, when you're not saved, you're at enmity with God because you cannot obey God's law or fulfill his will. And so it says we have peace with God. That's one of the blessings of justification by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, uh, when we talk about peace, condemnation, condemnation, uh, therefore, uh, there is uh, now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Condemnation means that God declares us sinners, which is a declaration of war. It's a declaration of war. Then justification means that God declares us righteous, which is a declaration of peace. Now, it's a, a, a declaration of peace through not our own efforts, but it's a declaration of peace because of what Christ Jesus did on the cross. And so not only do we have peace with God, he says, by whom also we have what? We have access. We have access we have access by faith into this grace, into this grace, wherein we stand. Access to God, access to God, access to God means that you can come. You can come. You can come. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to stand by and let someone introduce you. You don't have to stand by for them to say, Deborah Bland is here to see you today. Do you have time to see her today? That's not the way God works. When we have been justified, we can come to him anytime, anytime, and uh, any place, at any place. And so the Jew was kept from God's presence by the veil. Y'all know that, and we'll look at that in Luke, the 23rd chapter. It was kept, uh, kept from the God's presence by the veil in the temple. And then when we talked about the Gentiles, uh, how they were kept out by a wall in the temple. And on that wall, there was a warning on it that any Gentile who went beyond there would be killed. But when Jesus died, thank God, he tore the veil. The Bible says in Luke 23 and 45 that he tore the, the veil was rent in the midst, was rent in the midst. And then in Ephesians 2 and 14, it talks about how he broke down the middle wall of partition, how he broke that wall down. And now there's access for all, not just for one, not just for some, but just for all who believe. There is access. So in Christ, believing Jews and Gentiles have access to God, and they can draw on his inexhaustible, everybody say inexhaustible. Inexhaustible. Somebody tell me in one or two words what inexhaustible means. What does, it's, an, it's an unlimited supply. It's an unlimited supply. You cannot use it up. Don't let anyone fool you to tell you. Because haven't you heard people say, all right, is grace going to run out? Have you heard people say that? Yeah, and I, you've heard people say that. All right, all right now. You better watch out. Don't, don't, don't believe that. And God, believing Jews and Gentiles have access to God, and we can draw on the inexhaustible riches of the grace of God. Let's take a look at a few scriptures. Uh, Ephesians 1 and 7. Ephesians 1 and 7.
I'll start at uh, verse 3, and I'll read up to verse 7. Ephesians 1, it says, uh, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of of his grace. All of this, these are blessings in uh, justification, blessings in being justified. Look at uh, Ephesians 2 and 4. Ephesians 2 and 4. And I'll start at verse 1 and read to uh, verse 4. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, but God, but God, but God who is rich. Thank you, Jesus. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. Now, go on over to Ephesians, the third chapter. We just, well, you know, this is blessed assurance. This is blessed assurance this morning, y'all. And um, it, it just lets us know of the extent uh, of God's love for us. Uh, chapter 3 and verse 8 says, Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the, the unsearchable, the unsearchable riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches of Christ. We need to know, y'all, God has grace upon, somebody says grace upon grace. Grace upon grace. And it's enough grace to go around. It's enough grace to go around, and so we thank God for that. So we have um, peace with God, and we have access to him. We have access to him, and I thank God for that. I think that's one of the things that makes me happiest because sometimes when I'm um, at my lowest point or sometimes when I'm, uh, you know, scatterbrained, which is a lot, <laughs> Sister Cynthia, that uh, I can just go to God, y'all. And I, I thank God that there's no middleman involved in that. I thank God that there's no middleman involved in that because sometimes when there is a middleman, the message is uh, lost in translation, uh, lost on the journey. And so I thank God that I can go to him. And I can say, Lord, I'm hurting right now. Lord, I don't understand what's going on, but I know that you know. Lord, I need you to help me right now because I'm feeling like I'm, I'm just feeling like I'm alone in this world and I need you to help me. And so that's that. That's when when you can go to him and talk to him like that. And you don't have anyone talking about or trying to translate what you say. And I don't need anyone to talk for me. No, and you know, a lot of times when you're in a conversation, people will say, well, what's she trying to say is, no, I don't need you to do that. I know what I'm trying to say. I know what I'm trying to say. Can't nobody explain it like me. And so I thank God for the access that we have. And so not only that, he says, we have access by faith and to this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So we have a glorious hope now. Peace with God takes care of the past. If we have peace with God, 
now. We don't have to worry about what we've done because that's usually what happens. We don't have the peace because we're conflicted about the things that have gone on in our past. What we have to understand is that everybody has a past. Everyone has things that they've gone through and things that they regret, things that they wish they hadn't done. Everyone has that, but uh, our peace with God takes care of that. God doesn't, he's not worried about that because he has already thrown that into a sea of forgetfulness. He's already done that. And so that, that access then takes care of the present, anytime, any place. We can come to him whenever we need help. But the hope, he says, we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Hope of the glory of God takes care of the future. One day we will, we shall uh, share in his glory. And so you see the word rejoice there. The word rejoice can be translated here, boast. Now, when we were sinners, we had nothing to boast about. Nothing. Nothing to boast about because we fell short of the glory of God. Everybody, everybody, we missed the bullseye, fell short of the glory of God. But in Christ, we boast, we rejoice in his righteousness and his glory. And then it says, one of the blessings of justification. So we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Knowing what? That tribulation worketh patience. Lord Jesus, y'all just now, now let's, let's get it straight. That justification is no escape from the trials of life. We love the Lord. Yes, we do. And he loves us. But the trials of life will come. The trials of life will come. But for us as the believers, as believers, trials work for us and not against us. Yeah, we have to have, we have to have trials, y'all. And, and Lady Deborah, it, it does not help us when we take on the attitude of being entitled yeah. and spoiled Amen. and spoiled. You know, I, we were talking last night and I said, one of the worst attitudes that you can ever take is to believe that something can't happen to you. Amen. You start thinking you are above, but any calamity in life and they happen so fast. Yeah. I pray daily for myself, for you guys, uh, on that highway yeah. because things happen you know all of us think that we're excellent drivers and all that but those accidents happen so fast yeah. that you just it just happened out of nowhere you know if you had been uh, a, a few seconds earlier a few seconds later it wouldn't even happen but just right then and so uh, it, it, the saying I mean it's it, if the Lord don't help us yeah. the, if the Lord doesn't help us yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Just, just as a side note, I was driving on, on my way to uh, take little Jay back, y'all. I'm just driving now. I'm on the, I'm on the phone. You know, I'm calling myself hands free, but I'm talking. I'm talking about all of a sudden the three deer on Highway 49, right before you get to Bart, just died it. I started screaming like a banshee. I mean, it scared me so bad. It really did. And, uh, you know, it, just to speak to your point that things happen so fast. Yeah. Things can happen so fast. But, y'all, what we have to understand as we go through is we surely will and we surely are. You know, I always say everyone's always going through something. Yeah. You know, it's just a cycle. It's just a cycle. It's con continuous. No amount of suffering. Everybody say that. No amount of suffering can separate me from the Lord. No, no, no. Instead, what they do is they really just bring, they help to build our character, really. <laughs> really, it really does. And it helps you to realize, it brings some, uh, some degree of humility because when you are feeling that entitlement and things come, it lets you know, I'm just like everybody else. I'm just like everybody else. And so uh, it just helps us. It helps to build character. And like that, <clears throat> that's just briefly, that's why I try to get the message across to Manasseh 
that when other people are suffering, when, yeah. when other people have uh, death in their family, don't just don't just pa- let it pass by because it's not you. Because everybody loves their people. Everybody loves their mom and everything. You like because it's not affecting you. Because your day is coming. And I promise you, when your day is coming, you're going to want somebody to care. Somebody to care. You can't change nothing. But I promise you, it means something. And it was Jerry Cartwright told me this one time uh, when his daughter got killed. And I didn't go because I just, it was so many people and it was such a big thing and everything, you know, I just didn't go. And he came by my office and he came by there. He said, Preacher, I was looking for you. I said, well, Jerry, it was so many people and everything. He said, no, I was looking for you. He said, you know who was there and you know who wasn't there. Amen, amen. Anybody else? Praise the Lord. Say amen for Mother Nan coming in. Amen. Looking like Mother (laughs) Nan. Look, she came in late so we could could sit. Come come on up, come on up, Mother. Take your place, amen. And look, it says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope make it not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. And so, look, before we were saved, God proved his love. Y'all better say, look, God proved his love, mother. He proved his love by sending Christ to die for us. Now that we are saved, we experience his love with blessed assurance. What we've been talking about this morning. Y'all, Christ died one time. I'm telling him one time. One time. And, and, and this is just so clear to me now. He died one time. And he died for everything. Look, for all sins. Everything that I have already done, everything that I'm doing, and everything that I'm going to do. He can't come back and die for what you're going to do. That's what people don't get. Y'all, one time, and that one time was effective enough. And one time was effective. And so it is the inner ex- experience of this love through the spirit that sustains us as we go through tribulations. Yeah, we, we, we have to know that if God loved us enough to send his son for us, look, if he loved us enough to do that, my God, when we go through tribulations, we can lean on that love. We can lean on that love, faith, hope, and love all combined to give us patience in the trials of life. Y'all, if we know that God cares about us, mother, while we're going through, we can think about God is with me and he's going to see me through it. He's going to see me through it. And patience makes it possible for the believer to grow in character and become more mature as a mature child of God. You know, Lady Deborah, the Satan, spe- he specializes in sending you down the wrong road. Yeah. He don't mind you running and going just as long as you're going the wrong way. And, you know, we live in a day and time now that's so material. And I understand it because most of us want it. So we want it. We didn't have. Some of the basic things we take for granted right now, so Cynthia, we just didn't have it. Some of us. We didn't have it. And so we 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 into the cars, we into the clothes, and you know, and it's, that's nice, but that won't hold you. That won't hold you. That won't hold you. You can have the nicest automobile. You you can see that from people who got everything and getting divorced. They got everything up in the house and everything, but the one thing that's missing is love. It's love that that you know God has given me this and God given me that, but it's when you understand. That he loved me. Amen. Amen. Look, for when we were yet without strength, in due time, 
Christ died for the ungodly. Now, I don't know about you. I write it. I write in my Bible. Look, I write in my Bible. I'm like, look, look. I said, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for me. For me. See, because some people think that they're saved now. that like they walk around like they've been saved their whole life. Like they jump out. Like they've been saved. Like they've been saved their whole life. Look ungodly, unconscionable, no fault about what I was doing, just doing it, living life like it was bulletproof. Jesus, I thank God that in due time, Christ died for me. When I didn't even, look, I, I wasn't even thinking about myself. I wasn't even thinking about myself, but he died for me. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God, everybody say, but God. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Y'all, he, he, he loves us. He loves us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So that's one of the blessings, salvation from future wrath. See, it's a wrath to come. It's a wrath to come. But look, we've been justified. We've been justified. So Paul argued from the lesser to the greater, if God saved us when we were enemies, Lord, he's, he's going to save us from the wrath to come. He, we're, we're saved. We're saved from the wrath to come. You can look at that in First Thessalonians uh, uh, first Thessalonians, the uh, first chapter, the ninth through the tenth verse, and the fifth chapter, the eighth through the tenth verse. He also argued that if Christ's death accomplished so much for us, how much more will he do for us in his life as he intercedes for us in heaven? Aren't you glad for an intercessor? Aren't you glad for an intercessor? Saved by his life. When he says that, Romans 4 and 25 says this, who was delivered for our offenses. Amen. He was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. And so then, simply put, because he lives, we are eternally saved. We are eternally saved. We are eternally saved. And so, there's no stepping in and stepping out. There's no stepping in and stepping out. Surely, you're going to do some things that, you you know, your people might question. Yeah, look, is she saved or not? Uh-uh. I, I am. No matter what you think about it, I am. I am because he's already paid the cost for me. He's already paid the price for me. That's already been done. And he's not. he doesn't have to do that anymore because of his precious blood and how efficacious his blood is. Amen. Amen. No, Lady Deborah, you know, the Bible talks about, you know, he says from glory to glory. And that's one reason I believe that the Bible says that um, you desire the office of a bishop, which is simply a pastor. He said, but a, a um, what, what, what is a rookie, I just said rookie because I can't think of the word that's in the Bible. Uh, should not take a it because novice. it's a novice. novice thank you. Mm -hmm. Because you have to grow and mature Amen. into the right mindset. Yeah. And one thing you have to do, I put it like being delivered from Negroes, but put it in a nicer way, you have to get past other people's opinion. You have to believe God above all other people. Amen. And it takes time. Because you can say what you want to. All of us want to be accepted. All of us want people to like us and whatever. When after 25 years of uh, doing my best with some people, God separated me. I didn't separate myself. God separated me. And their attitude toward me after that, I had given them everything I had. See, I know my heart. And I know in my heart I love them. I didn't have nothing against them. I loved them. I loved the saints. But it was clear that the way I loved them, they didn't love me. All right. All right. 
I mean everything, doing everything. Trying to dress like they said dress, listen to the music they said listen to, go to the programs when I just didn't feel like giving money I didn't have after I did everything I knew to do. Still didn't think nothing of it. But you know what? That helped me. That helped me. Because I shouldn't have been looking to them no way. Uh, okay, so I want to stay right there, and I want to put this out here for uh, discussion. As you were talking about it, it is one of the things that will help us is to be able to move past people's opinions. Yeah. Yeah. How do you do that? How do you do that? Believe God. Believe Alex? God Okay, okay. Um, as we were talking to our little nephew last night, who said, uh, you know, he said, I have to, I had to come to uh, know, know myself, to be able to love myself, yeah. and to be able to realize that I don't need another person to, to, to validate me, right. affirm me in, in a way that makes me think, you know, that, because that's a sure hindrance. It's a roadblock. It's a roadblock. It's detrimental in a marriage. Yeah. You know, if you, you got two, two half people trying to make a whole, it never happened. No. Yeah. You know, I can't, you know, people so insecure. Yeah. I got to keep telling you I love you. I got to keep, you know, if, if you never believe, yeah. then you're not going to trust me. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Come on now. If uh, she even changed my dress, I was being store. You don't need that. Put that down. And I said, no, this is what I need to wear. And she, all the time, she'd just snatch it out of my hand and go hang it up. And Sue would always say, let me move. I don't know nobody thinks that I'm with 
<laughs> but I learned that I wasn't too ugly to wear something. You know. I was working. And you're talking about giving, Pastor. Uh, even uh, Marvin would say, you would give your last dad. You just, why did you do that? Anybody come along, they read a sad story you give. The wine is up. I have learned that all that what matters is that God loves yes. me so much. Yeah. He sent his son, yeah. Jesus. Absolutely. And Jesus Absolutely. loved me so he gave his son. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No. And he just felt like one I was reading, and when he said, Oh, you just said it. Who would give a life for you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. Jesus gave his life. That's yes. Right. It doesn't matter if you are here. He gave his life for you. Amen. It doesn't matter. I love him today. Yes, Lord. Like I was when I was driving. It doesn't matter about the clothes, the car, yeah. the this, the that. It's love. That's Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and as, as quicker we realize that, the better our life, the better quality of life we'll have. Because, you know, it takes Vandal Bland Sr. to snap me back into reality that said, look, you can do all of that and you can do every, you can do all of that and at the end, they don't like you no way. Amen. That's true. That's and sometimes that just snaps me on back into reality. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I, I'm a people pleaser. Yeah. You know, and uh, that's exhausting. That, that's exhausting. Yeah, yes, absolutely. And so, you know, I thank God for the love of God. I thank God for the acceptance with no strings attached. No strings attached. I thank God for that. And so he says, but um, let's see, I am in verse 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. The word atonement here means reconciliation. Brought back into fellowship with God. Brought back into fellowship with God. Go to Romans 1. Go to Romans 1. Romans 1, and let's look at, uh, let's start at, and Vandal, can you, uh, Pastor Bland, can you, I'm sorry. Can we, you we've been out of church. <laughs> Vandal, can you come on? That's all right. Pray for me. No. We're we back. We back. Uh, 18, verse 18. Can you uh -huh. start there, please? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Romans 1, verse 18. Just keep reading. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God have showed it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Well, for God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their bodies between themselves. Verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie yeah. and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who was blessed 
forever. Amen. You can stop right there. So Paul explains then how men declare war on God. And because of this, y'all deserve to be condemned eternally. Yes. Think about just, just eternal condemnation. But God did not declare war on man. Instead, he sent his son as the peacemaker that men might be reconciled to God. Yeah, that's love. That's love. We've done everything in the world to be outside. But he did everything to bring us in. That's love. Amen. That's love. And our salvation is certain yeah. in Christ. Yeah. It's certain in Christ. Totally apart from the law and purely by grace. Purely by grace. We have salvation that takes care of the past, the present, and the future. You know, the the argument that man makes is when you talk about you believe in grace, is that you're leaning too much on the Lord. You need to do, you know, you have to do, you should do this and you do that. But who else should who we else lean on? Who else should you lean on? Who else should we lean on? He's a mighty good leaning pope. Yes, he is. And with that, we're going to stop. Give the Lord a hand praise, everybody. <laughs> He's a mighty good leaning pope.